Let's pick up where we left off yesterday. By, net, by definition, a circle of radius A is a set of all points P, of it, which is just an X and a Y, whose distance from some center C, which are two points HK, or one point HK, equals A. From the distance formula, P lies on the circle if and only if the square root of X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals A. All that is just saying is that if I have a point C here, which is the center point, then a circle is made up of, like, let's say that this is me. Okay? And this is someone, we'll pick someone random, Ariana. I give Ariana a string, right? And I say, walk this out. Now, she can walk the whole way around me, holding that string, and it's going to form a circle because this is all the points that are equidistant or the same distance from the point C or the center point. So then this distance is A and we can find it by taking her location and subtracting mine from it. That's all. Same thing that we do in the distance formula. So it's essentially X minus H because it's those are our X values squared plus Y minus K squared equals our distance a as long as we're taking the square root of it or in other words x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals a squared this is our formula for a circle so in general whenever we're looking at a circle this is what our formula is going to be it's kind of the standard form so how can we find a circle center and radius Find the center and radius of the circle, and here it gives us a formula. In order to do this, we need to recall what we learned in Algebra 2, some of what we learned in Algebra 1, and some of what we learned in Geometry. Also, we did this in Calculus. So, what we're going to actually do is we're going to start by kind of putting our terms together. So, we'll get our x's together, x squared plus 4x. So I'm going to leave a little space, and then y squared minus 6y. So that now all I would have left is negative 3 over here. I'm going to add that to the other side to give us equals 3. By the way, I'm going to leave some space here as well. So when we talk about our standard form of a circle, let's go back and look at that. It was x minus h squared and y minus k squared. We will notice that we don't have a binomial squared like we would normally have. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. The reason that this is important is if we remember back to our circle here, our h and our k, I don't know where my clicker went, Uh-oh, going haywire now. All right, our h and our k come directly from our center point. So if we can get it in this form, then we can find our center point, those being our x and y values of the center point, and our a squared, or the number that's on the other side, is going to give us our radius. <clears throat> So what we have to do here is complete the square. So we're going to group this together like this. Now some of you may remember how to complete the square, some of you may forget. That's fine, we're going to go through it. <clears throat> to complete the square, we always take the term that is with our linear term, or with just the x. So we take that 4, and every time we take that term, b over 2, and then square it. So in this case, it's 4 over 2 squared. 4 over 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. Now, I can't just add 4 to the left side of the equation. Whatever I do to the left, I have to do to the right. So I have to add a 4 over here as well. Let's go to this portion. 
Now it was a negative 6 over 2 squared. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is a positive 9, which means I have to add a 9 to this side as well. Now, this is still not in the format that we're looking for. You should also remember from Algebra 2 and Pre-Calc is that whatever I got inside of here is going to be my number that goes behind here. So it's x, in this case, plus, because this is a positive, 2 squared. So whatever I got inside of here, that's what goes here. And this would be y, negative 6 divided by 2, minus 3 squared. Combine all these on the right side, that gives me 16. Now you notice from my equation that this is a negative here. This one is a positive, so it means I have to flip my signs whenever I'm identifying my center point. The center is flip the sign negative 2, flip the sign positive 3. My radius, now remember that's set equal to a squared, so I need to take the square root of 16. My radius would be 4. That's how I come up with center and radius. It's actually not horrible. It's just taking, uh, completing the square and giving us a purpose for it. Let's do another one. Graph the circle whose equation is given. Label the circle center and intercepts, if any, with, the, with their coordinate pairs. Okay, the first thing that I notice is that my batteries are charged. The first thing that I notice is if I go to pair my x's and y's together, I only have an x squared. That's sad. All by itself. I can start singing here, but I'm going to let it go. Let's pair the y's together. y squared minus 3y. And what would I do with this negative 4? Yeah, let's add it over to the other side. So that's equal to 4. You know, what I should have done was whenever I heard my battery charger going off back there, I should have uh, made it a word of the day. Word of the day is... Uh, let's go with center. The word of the day is center. Send me the word of the day. Oh, that was a huge stretch. Send me the word of the day, and you can get five bonus points. By the way, you can't send me the word of the day in like three weeks when you're trying to take your test on this. Word of the day has got to be sent to me like within the next two days when you should be taking your notes on all this, you know. All right, anyhow, back to the work. How can I complete my square for x squared? Well, the x, it's already completed. Since there's no x here, that gives me that this is x plus 0 squared. Oh, that makes sense, huh? Over here, now I can complete my square. Negative 3 over 2 squared. Well, that's ugly. Negative 3 over 2. Don't make it a decimal. Leave it this way. Square the top term. That gives me positive 9 over 4. Which means that I have to add 9 over 4 to this side. Now I can rewrite my equation. That's plus y minus 3 over 2 squared equals, now I have to get a common denominator, so I have to put the 4 over 4, but multiply the bottom by 4, multiply the top by 4. That gives me 16 fourths plus 9 fourths, which is 25 
fourths. I'll do our center point, zero, and three over two, and our radius is equal to the square root of this, which is five over two. We're done. Any questions with that? I hope not. It's really hard. I hate it here. So we have 5 over 2 and 0, 3 halves. The points x, y that it satisfied an equality where I have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, that looks like the first half of our circle. And then we have the a squared, but it's a less than sign. That makes up the interior region of the circle. That's where our, all these points that are inside of there have to be less than the radius squared. Or else they would be outside of the circle. Speaking of which, the points x, y satisfying the inequality, where that's greater than a squared, makes up the exterior region of the circle because this half would be bigger than our, what our radius is. So it's all the things that are outside of the circle. And that is about it for circles. I mean, we can look, we'll look more at interiors and exteriors as we move through calculus, but that's more or less uh, all that it is for circles. All right, parabolas are next. I think we'll wait till tomorrow. No sense in rushing it in. So we'll wait till tomorrow and get into the parabolas. Um, I'm going to give you some homework tonight on circles and things like that. Stuff you learned from the first day's notes and today's notes. All right, guys, have a good one.